In this presentation I'm going to look at the Hardy Cross method for solving a pipe network. A lot of people have come to me saying they're all confused about the directions of flow and things like this on the initial setup of the problem. This is quite easy to do and if you get it wrong you mess up the rest of the question. There are really two approaches. One which I set out in the lecture which looks at assigning a, a plus and minus sign to every direction and this works if, you be, if you're very careful. However, there's a rather easier method which is, involves looking at the arrows, drawing arrows on your picture and comparing directions and writing the sign down as you compare the directions. I'm going to go through that in this example now. First of all, we need to look at the problem. Now, we've got a network with some arrows showing the inflows and outflows on the network, and we've got some flows. So here we are with some flows down here. Inflows and outflows at B, C, D, E. What we don't know is the out, the, well, it's an inflow at A, this inflow at A. But we can work that out. We know we've got to satisfy continuity. That's the one rule at the start of this problem. Continuity is satisfied for the whole network and at every junction. So, looking at the whole network, we see that the total flows in are at uh, D and A, and that needs to equal the total flow out at B, C and D, which is 350. As D is equal to 150 in, a must equal 200. So let's see, let's put 200 going in at A. 200. There we are, 200. We can write that here. 200. Let's just put on the other flows that we've got there. We've got B out, 100. These are litres per second. Well, we're going to do the calculations in metres cubed per second, but it's convenient to write these in litres at the moment. C out is 150, D in is 150, and E out is 100. So, the first thing we've done is calculate the one unknown flow in. The next step is to choose the flows in each pipe. Now it doesn't matter what initial flows you choose. Some questions I'll give you the, the first input, some questions I won't. It doesn't matter. As long as continuity is satisfied at each node. In this question, you were told that the flow in pipe 1 was 50. You weren't told a direction, so you need to choose a direction. Let's say, flow in pipe 1 is A to B. And we'll put an arrow on there. And we were told it should be 50. 50 litres per second. So let's look at node B. We've got 50 litres going in. And we've got 100 litres coming out. So 50 in, 100 out. So we must, we must have another 50 going in. So we can draw a direction. And write 50 on there. Great. Let's now look at node C. We've got 150 out, another 50 going out, so we must have going in uh, 200 litres. 200, so flows going from D to C. Let's now look at node D. We see we've got 150 in. 200 out, so we're going to need to have another 50 going in. So in, 50. Okay. Node E now, we've got 100 out, 50 out, so we've got to have 150 in. 150. Along A to A. Let's just check that. We see. Node A, 200 in, 
one fifty out, fifty out. Continuity satisfied at every node. The next stage in this calculation is to choose a loop. So I'll select the loops. Well, there's only one loop. Uh, well, there's only one um, shape like shown, and we'll choose the loop to be shown as in this green arrow. Now I always choose a loop that is clockwise, doesn't matter. Choose which you want, I just think clockwise is easy. What we want to do now is compare the directions of the loop with the directions of the flow. So we're going to compare the green arrow, direction of the green arrow, with the direction of the red arrows, one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to put some signs according to these two arrows on the flows in each pipe. Now let's see pipe one. Pipe one is going upwards, which is in the opposite direction to the green arrow. So that's a negative 50 litres. Pipe 2, this arrow is in the same direction as the green arrow, so that's positive. So I'll just put a positive plus 50. Pipe 3 is in the same direction as the green arrow, so again that's positive. This time positive 200. Uh, and pipe 4. Similarly, is in the same direction as the arrow. Let's put on there what that is, and that's positive. Pipe 5, again, is in the same direction as the green arrow. So we can put on there plus 150. So now We've sorted out all the directions, all the arrows, continuity is satisfied, and we've got directions for flow, or signs on the flows. What we need to do is transfer all this data into the table that we'll use as a, to help us do the iteration. I've got these numbers written on in litres, it's because they're convenient numbers to use. We'll convert them to metres cubed per second, which just means dividing by a thousand. OK, let's look at the next screen. Right, here we are. Here's the screen. We label each pipe. One, two, three, four, five. We've got the Ks. You can calculate the Ks. They're just from the Darcy equation. We need to just put in the Qs here. Now, what have we got for Qs? Right. Pipe 1 was 50 litres per second and it was in the opposite direction to the arrow, so minus 0 0.05, yep, minus 0 0.05, 2 was in the same direction as the arrow, and it was 50 litres, so plus 0.05 3 again was in the direction of the arrows so plus of the loop so plus and this was 200 litres 0.2 pipe 4 was 50 litres again in the direction of the pipe plus 0.05 And the last pipe was 150 litres in the direction of the arrow again, so plus 0.15. Now we use these signs that we've got here to calculate the Q squared term. But remember that Q squared, it's not really Q squared, we're calculating it's Q squared with the sign, and to calculate Q squared with the sign, we use this approach. We do Q times the absolute value of Q. Or you can do Q squared and 
put the sign on that we've got here. So, point up. we'll just look at the first one, pipe 1, point 0.05 in the Q squared column. We'll write 0 0.0025 and that's going to be minus. All the others are going to be plus, 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 plus. And the second one will be 0.0025. And it's going over the edge here. The third one will be 0.04. The, the fourth one, again, 0.0025. And the last one, 0.0025 as well. OK. And then you carry on completing the table, complete your HFs, which are just K. K's times Q's, you get the right sign. You'll need to do the sum at the bottom here. And then you could do HF over. So this HF divided by this Q, again using the same signs as are in the table. And you'll need to then calculate the sum here. And then calculate the delta Q to add to each pipe. But you can go through those as in the material on the VLE. Some people will be saying, but these signs are all the opposite direction to the example on the VLE. Well, so they are. But you will get the same answer in the end, or something very close after two iterations. Give it a go.